sometimes at first glance, we can say, why did the church put these readings together? It just seems so far off from each other. But upon looking into them, we see something, an interesting parallel. In both the first reading and the gospel, we have a person who is crying out in pain. We have Shimei who is crying out for his kinsman, Saul. And what does he do? He's throwing stones and dirt. And just crying out in grief and anger against David the king. And then we have this man who is possessed by all these unclean spirits. Again, crying out and bruising himself with stones. The sense of, of this very desperate hour that has reached both of the lives of these men crying out to someone who was supposed to represent God. King David was supposed to represent God the king, to be uh, God's presence as a shepherd and guide his people. And his rule had been found wanting, as we saw in that first reading today. And so Shimei is crying out to God for what has been happening to his people. And David, for his part, recognizing his own grief and his own grief and the difficulty of the situation, crying out to God as well. And we see Jesus responding to the situation of this man in a very different way, as God, as being the incarnation of God's love here on earth, responding to this poor man's plight by liberating him from this terrible possession and, and finally freeing him of all this anguish. We recognize that as church, we are called to respond to those who are crying out. who are crying out into the desert. There's a, there's a very interesting video I saw on YouTube about how the homeless become invisible. And what they did was, they had kind of, uh, this group had sort of like gotten, a, gotten a couple of people to take part in something. They wanted to ask them a couple of questions. What they had done, they had found very close family members to these people and had them dress up as if they were living on the street, and then put them in the path of these persons as they're walking to this interview, right? And so they pass by their loved ones. And these are people that, you know, they would say uh, were like so close to and didn't even give a glance to them. And then they're shown a video of them walking by these people and then who they are. And it really, it's, it just strikes, it just it's like, Oh my gosh, I didn't even recognize them. And so the question is, are we as church, are we responding to the cry of those around us, those who are suffering so greatly? We had two major events in this last month from our Archdiocese, One Life LA, and on Saturday this last, uh, we had the Quinto Encuentro, the Archdiocesan Encuentro experience. And I just reading and hearing so many beautiful testimonies of people in those events and how they feel that they're being called forth to respond to the pain and the suffering that they see around. It's been a beautiful experience, but I think if we're honest, um, Kathleen, how many would you say were at the One Life LA this last year? Would you have like a... 35,000. 35,000. And then uh, Alvaro, uh, about how many do you think came to the Quinto Encuentro? 900 or so. About 900 or so. All together... That's uh, what, it's 40, no, 36 and some change, you know, 36,000. And we have 4.5 million Catholics. Whew, we got some work to do. <laughs> the work is awakening people to a heart of Christ that hears the suffering of people and responds. Now, I'm not saying that in any way that these events were, were lacking. They weren't. They were full of grace and spirit and a beautiful energy. But we got our work for cut out for his people. And we as leaders in the Archdiocese, we have it as a responsibility to enkindle in people around us this fire and this passion for responding to the cry of the poor, the cry of the needs of so many. And so my sisters and brothers, especially as we begin to prepare ourselves to go into Lent, to really look at how we as people, especially leaders here in the Chancery, the ACC, can be more responsive to the cries of those in such desperate need, the cries of the poor, and be responsive with the heart of Christ.